Hey guys, it's Elena. Today I want to introduce you to my brand new iridescent and holographic brushes for Procreate. These brushes are color shifting brushes that can provide a sprinkling of magic to just about any project. I will be adding some tutorials for gemstones in the coming weeks because these brushes are very well suited to that concept, which is one of my favorite things to paint. And they are also really great for adding a special something to any sort of project that you've made with any other brushes as well. For instance, adding iridescent dragonfly wings or mermaid tails or other fantasy creatures. Adding reflections to water or oil spill effects, making a gradient background for lettering or anything of that sort. There's really a lot of applications for this type of brush, so I'm really excited to show these to you and share these with you in the, the coming tutorials. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I just want to show you how to download the brushes. So you can do that within your files app. Once you have clicked download on the email that you get from Gumroad or Creative Market or wherever you have chosen to buy the brush set, you will then go to your files app and usually it will go straight to recents. Just go over to iCloud Drive and downloads. And I keep mine pretty clean because I do these videos, but you're probably going to have a long list of downloads in here. But it's important not to search, but just to scroll to where you can find it because if for some reason if you use the search it doesn't always work properly anyway so i've got the brush set here the zip file iridescent brushes for procreate and to open the zip file i will tap that it creates a new folder a new blue folder and that is the unzipped folder so i will open that up and this is the these are the files that you will receive there will also be a PDF in this folder which has links to the tutorials and the playlist and has a cheat sheet of the different brushes included. And there are two different brush set files, AJ Iridescent and AJ Holographic dot brush set. And then we have two different color palettes, Intense and Light dot swatches. These two brush sets, Iridescent and Holographic, are identical other than the color changing properties within them. So one of them has more color changing than the other. And so I will get more into that once I start showing you the brushes. But once you've got this open on your files app, in order to load in Procreate, all you should have to do is tap on the brush set and then it imports into Procreate. And you won't see anything, you won't see this or anything other than when you go to your brushes and scroll down on that brush list, you'll see the new brush set that you have just imported at the top. And it's the same thing with the swatches. It should import and procreate when you tap it and then go to where it says palettes and you should see that at the bottom. The, the two different color palettes, the light one looks better on a lighter background and the intense looks better on a black background or a dark background. So I'll just show you how to do it a different way, just in case that doesn't work for whatever reason. Another way to do this, to open the files in Procreate is hit select and then select the file that you want, share, and then it should have Procreate on this list here like it does for me, but if it doesn't, scroll to the right, tap more, and then you should be able to add it here and then it will open and procreate just the same. And you can do that with the swatches as well. And you can just see I've loaded that one so it's appeared at the top as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started discussing the different kind of brushes that are in here and the difference between holographic and iridescent. From what I understand of the definitions of these two words, holographic has more of a color spectrum than iridescent. So you will get almost a full rainbow of color from the holographic brushes. The holographic brushes will also change color even more the more that you use pressure. The iridescent brushes have one main color, but they do shift to nearby colors on the color wheel as well. The iridescent brushes are great if you want to have more control over what you are doing and which colors are showing up in the brushes. And the holographic brushes are great for 
really colorful projects and unpredictable happy accidents. That is the main difference between these two brush sets and every brush in the set is included in both of these two different folders. So just for this demonstration, I'm just gonna go with the light for now. And I will show you what I mean about the difference between the two. So I will just select this brush called Prismatic in the holographic. So you can see it has a huge range of color. It's almost a whole rainbow. There is still a difference when you choose one color over another. See, this one does have more purple in it. It's slightly less saturated overall because this purple is a little bit less saturated. And the, the light color palette in general is not super saturated. So when, I, when I'm talking about saturation, what I mean is that you go, when you go to the value tab, this S right here, it's more gray than it is green. And this percentage is really low. So the more saturated something is, the more colors you're gonna get out of it. And the less saturated, the more subtle it's going to be. Like that. So that's the holographic. I'm going to switch to the iridescent to show you what I mean about the difference between the two. And I'm going to the same brush within the, holo the iridescent because these are essentially the same brushes in both of these sets, except the color changing properties are different. So in the iridescent, I'm going to go to prismatic, the same brush that I was using previously. And you can see that it has less of a range of color than if I was using the holographic. So with the iridescent, these are good like if you wanna have a bit more control over what is coming out and the range of color. They both do have color changing properties to them because that is kind of the essence of iridescent and holographic. Um, in real life, not on an iPad, you would get these colors if you're like moving it around and then the light would catch it in a certain way, then you would see different colors coming out. And obviously we don't have that on an iPad, but we do, we are able to emulate that with the different colors. So both of the brush sets do have different colors in them and there is some level of unpredictability because of that. You can always change the color dynamics yourself. So I wanted to show you how to do that so that you can, if you're not happy with, for instance, if you're, if you're drawing with this and you, let's see, let's, if you didn't want that green or that purple in there and you just wanted it blue and you feel like this is still too much color changing, you can tap the brush and then go down here on the left where it says color dynamics. And you see that I've got the hue on the on this here, the iridescent brush, set to 50%. If you lower that to 10%, for instance, and then go back in, you have mostly just blue. So I wanted to show you how to do that because I want you to be able to have as much control as you can I'm just gonna set it back up before I forget. Um, I wanted you to have as much control as you can over that. You can also control the, the color shifting by going to your value tab and changing the saturation like I showed you. And you can just play around with the different values here to get some fairly vastly different results um, depending on what you are choosing. So, with that said, I hope that is clear. The difference between the holographic, which has a whole spectrum of the rainbow, and the iridescent, which still has a color spectrum, but not as wide of a range. So now I wanted to go ahead and just talk about the different types of brushes in here. I'm not going to demo each one. I'll leave that to you. However, I just wanted to explain the different types. So first we have the soft gradient, and the textured gradient, these are very similar. Um, soft gradients are really popular right now, so this is really nice if you want to do like a background for something or you know, some lettering 
or just like make a, a web graphic or something like that. You can really have some fun with these, these brushes. And if you are going with a lot of pressure over in the same spot like this, you'll get kind of a lighter bit in the middle. And that's because these are also kind of have a shiny metallic effect to them. And the texture gradient is very similar. It just has a nice texture to it as well. And so after these gradient brushes, we have several brushes, which are just um, a lot of different effects. And actually I've, I've really cut this down quite a bit. There were quite a few more, but I've cut it down to my very favorites. So hopefully the names are, are fairly um, self-explanatory. Something to keep in mind with pretty much all of these brushes is that they are all, they all have a metallic nature. So they are, if you use them over top of each other, they'll get shinier or lighter looking. And if you want to layer a lot of different effects over top, uh, one over top of another, then it's good to use some layers. So like if I keep going on top of this, really pushing hard, that doesn't look so good. So if you want to layer the brushes, it's good to add new layers on top of each other. So now I can go on top of that and add something on the side without it going white, because I do want to have sort of a, I do want to be able to have a shiny effect by this, this lightening. But if you just go over it a lot, um, it's, it's just not really looking good anymore. So in order to avoid that and to layer different things on top of each other, just keep adding layers. And so moving on down, we have, we just have a lot of different kinds of effects, different things that you can do. And, you know, I'm tr I've tried to name most of them as um, logically as I can. So moving on from the, basically the kind of brushes in the middle here, which are fairly um, miscellaneous. Then we've got the foil brushes and there's a lot of different types of foil in here. Again, these are shiny and you know, there's a lot of different, there's these thin lines of foil. There's, um, you know, some big ones as well. And we've also got cracked foil. And then we've got our sparkles. So we're moving on into the glitter brushes. And so we've got different, some different sparkles. We've got glitter flakes and we've got a glitter sketch brush. And then we've got some solid glitter, some lots of different loose glitter. So we've got this one that's confetti. And if you keep going with it, um, you'll see the confetti sort of emerging and getting shinier. We've got a lot of different kinds of loose glitter and so on. We've got some really thin ones here. And then at the very end, we've got these three um, different lettering brushes. And with the lettering brushes, there is a difference in the holographic um, lettering brushes as opposed to the iridescent lettering brushes in that they are slightly pressure sensitive. So if you are um, on your, your thin upstrokes and then you push on the downstroke and uh, you'll see that the color changes ever so slightly. Uh, according to how much pressure you're using. I'm just going to choose the intense colors so you can see something super colorful here. So I just wanted to add a little bit more control for the lettering in that way. And then if you just want it to be solid glitter and not have this effect, just use the iridescent versions instead. And so we've got three lettering brushes. They're all fairly, oops. They're all fairly similar.
So that is basically it. These are all fairly straightforward. The main things to remember is the difference between the holographic and the iridescent. Being that the holographic has a lot of different colors, the iridescent not as many. And it's also important to remember to use multiple layers if you're going to be using several brushes on top of each other, then that is the way to go. And other than that, it's also important to just experiment with your colors. Go to the value tab and experiment with the amount of saturation. And you're always welcome to go and change the amount of, of stamp color jitter in the hue slider here to have more control on that. So I hope that this was helpful and you're very welcome to leave me a comment or even better, send me an email, hello at elenajensen.com. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions and I always get my emails before anything else, but I'm happy to answer in any way that you can get a hold of me. And um, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to sharing some tutorials with you for these brushes in the coming weeks. Bye.